Yeah. So I always, you know, on the Bronco had a ceramic button clutch in it. And the way I got the ceramic button clutch is I took it down, to, took the brand new clutch disc down to the capital uh, clutch in Sacramento. I said, I want ceramic button to sit on. No problem. And that's what they did. They put the ceramic in the, they took the rivets out of the, the new, new material, asbestos material and put on those rhyming buttons. But God, there's, they're trying to feather that damn thing. Because <laughs> you, from disengaged to fully engaged is about that far on the, on the clutch pedal. That's it. The rest was just kind of. <laughs> I had the diesel shit my Fiat. I had a boyfriend that taught me how to diesel shift it. I'm like, you can't drive this car without the clutch. Sure you can. It'll ruin it. He's like, sure you can. Sure you can. And he showed me how to diesel shift it. And man, it was sweet. Sweet, sweet. I love that little car. That was one of the neatest cars I ever owned was that 850 Sport Coupe Racer with a 1,000 watt rear end engine. I ran across one recently, too, that somebody had that was not too expensive. That saw one go through a show that was like 10 tons of money. But those those ceramic disc clutches are you really can't burn them out. The only thing I found out with them is okay now when your clutch is finally giving up the ghost, right? It won't hold anymore. Yeah. It's time to replace the clutch. You pull it out and you look at the disc and the disc is just fine. What the hell? Then you look at, and the pressure plate is wore out. It's wiped out. That's where all the wear oh, was in the God. pressure plate. Pressure plates. Oh, I used to go through that with the Fiat. It, it, man, if it wasn't one thing, it was another. And beat that down. Clutch cable, pressure plate, clutch, throw out bearing. I can't tell you how many times when the car started acting up, I would go to Mom Leighton's house. And say, hey, I need to work on my car. Is that okay? Yeah. And she'd go out to the back to watch the gate. I'd go through the back alley and then pull the car in. She'd have two big swinging gates. And then pull the car in, close the gates, and I worked on asphalt. She took all the grass out of the backyard, put asphalt down. And I worked on that asphalt, and I would pull that engine out, boom, boom, boom. And I think it had three motor mounts. <laughs> and and on, I, you pulled, one was on the back panel, which you removed the whole back panel of the car off. Yeah. And... I would just slide that bad dude out, that engine, and start jacking with it, the training and everything. Oh, God. It was, those things were so, I mean, temperamental. You really couldn't let anybody drive it but you because it was conditioned to the way you drove. And as soon as you let somebody else drive that clutch car, <laughs> it jack up that damn clutch so that you can drive it just right. And, um, uh, but, uh, it was the greatest little car. It was so neat to work on. I spent like a year underneath it one time working on it. What a flipping nightmare. I will never forget the cold up my spine. You know, when the mechanics would tell you, well, I want you to catch that cold up your spine. You're a real mechanic, you know. And I couldn't imagine working like that all my life. God, it was just terrible. <coughs> yeah, yeah, the other thing I found out is the next time Broncos, no. Went to go. I said, well, I'm going to have to replace that goddamn. I said, man. They're it. fun to drive. Those old Broncos yeah. and stick shit. So this, this is the second clutch. And, of course, you know, naturally the clutch lasted longer. Did you did you have that four-wheel drive driver where you turn the hubs and all that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't you remember the Bronco? Oh, that one that you had? Yeah. With the international engine in it or something? No. That's a little 289 at Windsor. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I pulled the clutch out. The disc is still okay. The pressure plate is wore out. Now, this is wore out two pressure plates, right? That's and so I get it all apart, and I look at the flywheel. No. Now that there's wear on the flywheel, so I have to pull the flywheel off and get it oh. resurfaced. <laughs> Yeah, and there too. <laughs> God. And I don't know, you know, they say that the clutch cars are the so much better car to have. That they just outlast anything. That's the big thing now is to get a clutch car. 
you know. And they don't make too many of them. And, and most people can't even drive them. <coughs> they don't understand the theory. Yeah. You have to learn by somebody that explains the theory to you. And, and uh, um, because you just tear it up. You just really want to tear I, it up. When, I took, uh, when, when I took my driving course in high school, they had driver's ed in high school. Right. And, uh, of course, it was a funny-looking vehicle because it had two steering wheels and it had oh, I two clutch that. pedals, yeah. two brakes, and two so throttles, right? Could, you know, right, so you could could override yourself. Yeah. <laughs> God. And uh, it was just it was some weird shit. Yeah, I remember that way back. But they, they, you had to learn on a standard. They would not let you learn on an automatic. Wow. Why would you think that would be the case? Uh, the only thing I could think of as a plus for that is understanding transmissions because uh, my friend Christina Worrell, she had a car that was automatic. And the brakes were wiped completely out. And I had to drive it from the valley down to Santa Monica. She used to let me drive a car on time. And I would just downshift yeah. to get it to stop. Yeah. You know? And, Until uh, the last little bit. And then you yeah. push in on the clutch and pull the emergency brake. <laughs> and and it was, she was like, I don't know how you drive it. I said it very carefully. Yeah. But it can be done. You just have to do it very, very carefully. You have to hear the revs and know what you're doing. Yeah. But um, and keep a distance away from people. But, oh yeah. Uh, it could be done. But that's about the only thing I could think of that would be a plus is understanding the transmission. But the reason they did that is, is revolution. If you can drive a stick, you got to drive an automatic. But I, it's two different entities, if you ask me. It's a very synchronized thing to drive a stick shift. Right. And if you can drive a stick. You can jump out of that goddamn thing and never driven an automatic before in your life. Look down there, where's the clutch pedal? Well, it doesn't need a clutch. Just put your foot on the brake, put it in drive, it'll, you know, and then release the brake and it'll start moving. Let me tell you, Bill West, one night we, we went to this, my dad was having a big party, or I don't, I don't remember what it was, and, 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 you know, he invited us, and over at Marquesas Way over there, uh, but department buildings, they had a, a pool with a, like a building, and you could use it. It had a kitchen and, and all that, and a pool table and, you know, a little fireplace thing. And you could use it, sign up as a renter there, to use that, that, that room. And uh, so uh, it was kind of neat because you could barbecue at the pool and all that and everything. And you, you could put a ton of people in there, you know. Um, like probably a hundred people at least, and it was a neat little thing to be able to have access to that for free, being a renter of that complex. So my dad was having a party there. He used to do a lot of parties and stuff there, and uh, he invited us over. And but Bill West and I went over there, and you know he was an alcoholic. He was uh, what you call a healing alcoholic or whatever. Yeah. You know, they're not supposed to drink and all that. And so it's really hard to have. Uh, that was my first life, lesson in life I learned about how to fix an alky because you never will. No. They have to fix themselves. Yeah. And he was a wonderful, wonderful man. But, you know, if he got near alcohol, it was, the first drink wasn't a bad thing, <laughs> but after that, then it was like down hung no bricks. And, <coughs> um, I said, you know, there'll be alcohol at this party, you know, mostly wine and stuff, and it's all, you know, hot to tell people. And so we got to this party and Bill had act pretty good. And then in the end, somebody was like, you know, throwing up some shooters or a few beers and all that that I didn't know about. And um, we got away just in time. Um, and he would, you know, when he he would drink, he would drink to pass out, you know. So we were going up in the parking structure at my dad's complex over there to get in the car. And we had a little Toyota station wagon or something. And... Um, so, uh, you know, I told him, I said, well, um, you can't drive. And he was laughing and stuff. And so, um, I said, did you drink 
at the party, and he's like, not really, and, and like I have one or something, and um, it, it's a, I mean, you got to babysit them when they're out case. Yeah. You about to have to fall in the bathroom because you you just got to try to keep them from doing. You don't it. have to explain to me anything it's about alcoholics. It's a horrible thing to go through because you think you're God and you can fix them because you love them and all, and you will never fix them. They will go to the grave before you do, which is a true story. And um, uh, so. Yes, you knew you knew another one, we're, one that I knew. Were uh, Tom. Oh, Pa. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking he was kind of a little bit of a donkey, but I mean, he was a private. Little bit donkey. He was a, he was donkey. He was private though. He didn't have. You know, no, that was life. Tom. For some reason, he didn't get like people do. But anyway, so I mean, I seen him fire up a few times, but he just yeah, leaves. And he's, and he's, and he's funny as shit. Way. You know, he he gets funnier when he gets but, more drunk. Uh, I used to go clubbing with him. He wanted me to drive him around. But um, so anyway, we got in the car, and um, I told Bill, I said, okay, now you're going to have to tell me how to drive this. He goes, oh, you don't have to drive a stick? I said, well, no. I said, it's easy. So he says, okay, now, first of all, you know, you put your foot on that clutch, the one way over there. Okay, put your foot on the brake. He says, and then it, you got him neutral, right? And he says, okay, now you turn the key on, but leave the clutch in because it'll die. Okay. And then he says, okay, now you take it and you put it, push it down, pull it back to put it in the reverse, the R thing yeah. on there. I think it was like a four-speeder. Yeah. And so I do that, and he says, now you let it out, you know, and it'll go back. And you do the gas as you're letting out the clutch thing, you know. And, it, you know, it's doing that, er, 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 <laughs> yeah. and the parking structure thing. But it's a big parking structure, so it's pretty cool. And it's only a little car. And so I get it kind of going. I'm trying to figure this out. I do not understand the accelerate while you're doing the other foot, because I'm not a two-footed driver to begin with. And so uh, it was really horrible. I'm like, I'm just going to burn this car up. And I'm thinking of my dad's Porsche, because he used to throw fits over that Porsche. And, God, if we had ever tried to drive that, we would have surely destroyed it. And um, so I'm doing that. I'm drifting down the parking structure because it's very steep. So it's pretty fun because you got it, you know, in that first gear and you're just kind of drifting down there. You don't have to accelerate. It. It's kind of like a little roller coaster ride. Get down four levels of that structure down to the ground. And now the car like rolls and stops. And, the engine and I'm sitting there with a foot here, you know, foot here. I'm like, what do I do now? I got started again. He passes out in the other seat. <laughs> Cole, just, and I'm like, Bill, Bill, and he's, and I'm like, no, yes, dude, let me tell you how to self-teach yourself how to drive a stick shift car, dude, and the worst part is I had to go uphill to get out, because at that yeah, place, yeah, that, that, you got that, they had that, brake to the foot pedal, yeah, <laughs> no, they had it uphill, once you came out of parking structure, right, you had to drive down the side of the building, between the apartment buildings, and then they had an uphill exit, driveway right and if you roll back it had all those forks up in there yeah to keep people from driving in the exit and i'm like oh so i'm sitting there going i've got to be able to floor this <laughs> to get it up over and then hopefully not hit anybody in the street and <laughs> how am i gonna do this <laughs> and you know i don't even know what one two three and four do so you know i'm doing this in the first gear and oh my God, uh, and that thing started roll back and I thought, oh no, I'm gonna lose the tires on this car. And let me tell you, I shipped that sucker and did it again. Wham, Florida, there was no car coming up, Florida. You know, and got it out of there. Burnout. And pulled it <laughs> in that little tiny Toyota and pulled it down the street and there was a big, there, there, I don't know if it was there when we went back, they had a big parking lot next to the buildings there. Cause there's like four buildings in a row down the whole boulevard. And then at the corner, of Marquesas Way and Via Marina, there was a huge, big parking lot, public parking lot. And so I got it up in there, and and I'm sitting in the parking lot looking at the boats in Marina, like looking mostly at my dad's boats, and I'm sitting there with Bill, and I'm like, Bill, wake up. And he's, I mean, just out. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad he didn't do that at my dad's party. And so I'm sitting there, and one of our, one of our <coughs> friends, that we know was walking by the marina and and um uh he's like what you doing you know and i'm like uh well i was like 
trying to leave this party at my dad's and um uh you know Bill gets passed out and they have a seat and he said, So what's the problem? And I said, Well, I don't know how to drive a stick shift. I need to laugh. <laughs> and I'm like, it's all right, I'll just sit here and watch the boats and maybe he'll wake up in a couple hours and then we can go home. But oh uh, unreal. Well we we had it broke down there one time before with the Toyota. Years later, we were going down the marina, and Bill and I were in the car, and I, I drove most all the time. And so, um, uh, not that he wasn't a good driver, he just didn't have a driver's license for many, many, many years. And so, anyway, we were driving down the marina, and we'd have that same parking lot. The car started smoking. I said, Bill, the car's smoking. He goes, okay. I said, oh my God, the car's smoking. You need to pull it over. He's like, okay. I said, I'll just, I'll just pull over here in the parking lot. Pulled in the same big giant parking lot, pulled it by Marina, <clears> and jumped out, opened the bonnet, and it's smoking. And it's wires that are burning. And I'm like, oh my God, the car is like on fire. It is burning. And, and Bill goes, yeah. I mean, he's real calm. Yeah. And I said, I said, well, do something. And I'm like, you know, gas, electric, I mean, it's going to blow up. You know, like, we need to run away from this car. And, and he's like, no. Okay. And he's standing over the engine. He unzips and whoops that stuff out and pisses on the engine. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? He said, putting up the fire. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't believe you just did that. You know, <laughs> the new engines, you can never do that because all the sensors, you can fry it. But he was he just pissed on it. And I'm like, I was so mad. I was screaming. I was just hysterical. <laughs> and I'm like, are you stupid? You know, <laughs> what in hell are you doing pissing on the engine? You know, and he's like, well, you, you wanted me to put it out. <laughs> and I'm like, Bill, I couldn't believe it. And he's like, what did you want me to do? It's burning. <laughs> it's just burning. I mean, you know, the only thing you do is sit and look at it. <laughs> I got one for you. He's like, oh, my God. Now, it's one you've never heard. Uh-oh. <clears throat> I was driving. What the hell was I driving? Oh. We were going down from Tahoe City down to uh, Sacramento in Kathy's 67 Galaxy. Well, all of a sudden, no brakes. Oh, that's always the fun part. This, 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 this is the Sierras, right? Well, Finally got over to a place where it rolled up and you know, was able to get the parking brake to actually work. You know? <laughs> because, you know, that 67 Galaxy was, you know, a muscle car, a bit of a lead sled. So I look at the brake and I'm, they're not hot. So I popped up on the brake master cylinder. And I hadn't checked it in ages. And it's empty. It's dry. It's dry. Well, the master cylinder have enough fluid in it, right? Right. And now you had a line that was no good and it blew it out. No. Because I crawled underneath and I checked. No leakage anywhere. Oh my god. Well, as soon as you run them dry, they're shit. They're gone. That's what they say. Did the run them dry? Well, the mechanic told me that years ago. He said, You can bleed them, but if it goes dry, it's garbage. <laughs> no, it's not garbage. You just have to bleed them again. But, uh, what do you think I did? Uh, it, it was a clutch car? Huh? No, it was the master cylinder. It was empty. There was still a little well, you in have the one option that's really good. <laughs> and I mean, shift it in park and the entire transmission empties out all over the ground. <laughs> that's what they say. Just shift it in the park. It'll be all right if you had that problem. Yeah. And it, but they don't tell you the part about it empties the entire transmission uh, out all right, the way so around. It depends on what the parking hall does. God. But the uh, hood was open. There wasn't a lot of traffic. So I got up onto the fender with hood open. And if we read on the car. <laughs> and I feel that you know, got that master cylinder with the, you know, I filled it about you halfway. You put urine in the master cylinder? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No. What? 
I peed in the master cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You put urine in the master cylinder. Daddy. Yeah. It worked. Jesus. As soon as I got down to Sacramento, over to uh, her folks' place. In fact, actually, on, on the way there, I got a big goddamn thing of uh, brake fluid. And uh, I cracked all the lines and I flushed the urine out of it. <laughs> God. No, never had a problem with it after that. But it'll work. I love the old cars because, uh, you know, they had like the four or five belt drive, you know, before they had these serpentine belt one belt right. drive deals. I used to love them. Like that Camaro, you know, I used to carry pantyholes in the back. And people, mechanics, and people go, what the hell is this? I said, we always need a spare pair of pantyholes. I mean, you know, if you get a run in one or whatever, I use it for my car. I'm like, what do you use it for your car for? Belt. I said, hey, you blow a belt on this sucker, one side of pantyholes gets you 40 miles. And I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, just cut off one side. You tie it up there real good. It'll take you 40 miles. So you got one whole pantyhose with two legs. You got 80 miles <coughs> in one pair of pantyhose. And the new cars, you can't do this. I hate it when they put those new cars out with a one-belt drive. The first one I looked at was at Horner Chevrolet in Helena, Arkansas. They had the new Camaro or Firebird down there. I guess it was Camaro. And went down there, and it, boy, it was a pretty thing. God, it was a pretty thing. And, and went down there, walked around, the salesman was out there, and I think it was like red, gray, and black trim or something. And I said, nice car. And he goes, well, uh, you want to test drive it? I said, I don't know. I want to look at the engine first. And I'm looking all around it, look under it. He opens the bonnet. I look at the engine. I said, what is that? And he goes, well, I said, what the hell is that? He said, what are you talking about? I said, where's all the other belts? He said, oh, no, that's the new serpentine one belt drive. And I said, and that does what? He says, it drives everything. Yeah. Everything's on that one belt. I said, I don't know if I like that or not. And he goes, why? I said, well, because <coughs> in that car over there, I can use one side of penny holes to go 40 miles if I blow a belt on something. This one, if the belt blows, everything goes, right? So and what do goes, you do? Yeah. And I went, I just don't know about all that. So, you, so what do you do? You carry a spare. How difficult is it to change a serpentine belt? They suck today. Do the one of on this one I got out here. Do the one I got on this one out here. You have to do it from underneath the car. And you have to start, like, you know, moving stuff. This one is a joke out here on this A. And the one on the van is even more hilarious. Uh, it's like putting a timing belt in it. That was so bad. Now, the Cadillacs weren't bad. They're a nightmare because they just go all over everything. Oh, I know. But the only thing, and they have diagram on every car. Right. <laughs> which is nice because you go on. Okay, do you have that right? Um, and, and then, uh, um, and you always know when you don't have it, right? Because it just uh, unroll and fall off there. But the thing about the Cadillacs, they were nice because when you figured out how to use the slack adjuster. Right. And you fold it back with, you know, a, a, a handle, you know, from your uh, 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 socket wrench. You just put that handle in there. fit perfect. <laughs> and you, you know, pray to God you got it run around, routed the right way, and you use that handle to pull it back to get it in there. And then when you take that handle out, it's kind of laying there. The whole thing is just kind of not, you just look at it and go, no. And then you start the car, and then within about two minutes, the belt just adjusts its whole self. Yes. It automatically tensions and does right, things. And, right, and it's and, and it out. you just go, no, what saying. the hell, while you're watching it do that all by itself. Yeah. Like there's somebody standing there just kind of putting it all together. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But it will, you know, settle itself out in just about two minutes. It's the craziest thing. Um, but I, 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 I still like the old way where you had to, like, take a, a freaking screwdriver <coughs> and pull, get the thing to go up over the pulley and... You know, all that kind of stuff. Try to get it to fit, you know. We were, I pulled up in the marina over at the sailing school. My dad had this, we call it the limo. It's a really big custom-made Cadillac that belonged to Harry Lambert. This guy owned banks in, in England. And he and Pete, my dad taught him how to sail and stuff. He's an older, older gentleman. Had a huge amount of money. And he'd come back and forth from England all the time. So he, he contacted Cadillac having custom this car for him. 
that was extremely long and limo styled kind of four right, door. stretched. And it was beautiful. Um, custom color, the whole thing. So I pull up, and my dad is out there in Bermuda shorts, which were so out of style in the 70s and 80s, in a big, long, white Bermuda shorts. Unless you're um, in Africa. And, yeah, he, he has what he looked like, like he was going on <laughs> a tiny expedition. And, and, and I used to laugh all the time, because he never wore short shorts. He always wore these big, long, to the knee things. Right. And um, so, but that was just his style. Um, so, anyway, I pull up, and he's out there in those trunks, and no shirt, and his deck shoes, and he's got a 2 by 4 by like 10 sticking out of the bonnet of this Cadillac. And I'm like, has my dad lost his mind? You know? I, I pull up, and I'm looking as I'm driving in, because my dad doesn't work on nothing. He has high dollar mechanics and all that for the Mercedes and all that. And I... I I'm like, what in the living hell is he doing? I thought he had gone senile, you know? And so I get out of the car and I'm walking over there really carefully. And I said, look, how I'm doing. He's like, hi. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm working on the Cadillac. And my dad was not a mechanic, trust me. Yeah. I mean, he's, he did his atomic fours and you know, engines in his boats and stuff and that. But he cars was not something my dad did, you know? He was not the first person to get out and go, maybe I should put in a freezing. I mean, everything went to shops. My dad was not to Kent. So, anyway, he's out there with that big piece of wood sticking out of the bonnet. And he's doing something. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I had the alternator. I took it down to the, the, the uh, uh, they have these, these stores that you go to that, um, you know, for your boat equipment, like alternators and all that, and they rewind them. Yeah. And he took this alternator down. That came out of the car, not the boat, yeah. and took it down and said, Hey, can you guys rewind this? And, and the reason being is obviously because, you know, Cadillac alternator is grotesquely high. You know, so he can go down to the boat place and have them rewind it for about 40 bucks. Yeah. And they open it up and do the windings on it, rewind it with copper or whatever, and, and then give it back to you. And so that's what he had done. He had had the, the, the generator or alternator, whatever it was. Rewound. Alternator. And so he's in there trying to put it in, and he's got that big giant piece of wood trying to leverage it, you know, to get it into place so you get the belt out and all that stuff. And I'm like, why? And he's like, well, I'm trying to get it in place. He said, let me show you what I do. And I said, you got a hammer? Yeah. I said, you got like a crowbar or something? Yeah. And so I got rid of the wood. And, and I mean, he's out there by himself. That yeah. was the first mistake. And I said, look, this is how I do it. And I use a hammer, I pull, you know, I lose some bolts, pull around, and then, you know, you can use a crowbar to pull some more and take a screwdriver and pop the damn, you know, belt over that pulley just in the nick of time without taking your fingers off. And then, you know, bend back with a crowbar and get that thing back stretched as far as you can and then start bolting it in. And he just said, wow, that's amazing. I'll never forget that when I pulled up, he had that big, horrendous piece of wood sticking out of that car. I mean, it was like, you know, taller than him. It was so funny. I'm like, what is he doing? It was so funny. I can't believe it. You know, and I was like the queen of tweakers because I, I, I play the cars all the time because when you leave home young and you have nobody and you don't have money, you better learn how to work on it yourself if you want to be stuck on the 405 and get raped, killed, and chopped up into 100 pieces. You better learn how to turn a wrench, by God. Uh, well, that was my problem. I never learned how to turn a wrench. Yeah. <laughs> that purple engine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pink and purple. Pink and purple. She wanted it. I could have sold a thousand of those goddamn rebuilds in San Francisco. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they like yellow now. They're, yellow was very big in the 70s. If you wore yellow shoes or had yellow Cadillac or any of that, people always make jokes. Oh, San Francisco, huh? <laughs> you know? Hybrid. They put it up on that goddamn... Uh, the engine was fresh. I mean, there wasn't even 50 miles on it. When, what big old tires get the tires put on it? Because this is the size tires I want for the back. 
and I says, and I, you know, I wanted the all-terrain style, and the front, I wanted the, so it's, this is the size tire I want on the front, and I want the LT style, which is, you know, non-aggressive. And, oh, okay. And so they got their tires out and put the thing up on the rack. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in the waiting room, and they got the glass where you can look out and see where they're working. And the, it was right next to where I was at. So they raised it up, and the kid got took the tires off. Then he stopped, and he looked for a moment, and then he bent down and kind of looked up. And he come back over it, and he raised the truck up higher. He looked at that. And he shouted through the, through the shop, Hey, come look at this! And he dropped the thing down to, you know, <laughs> almost to the ground. <laughs> Opened up the hood. <laughs> the, the, God! <laughs> And I was kind of sheepish because, you know, here, here I am, and this is you know, a fresh pink and purple engine. Yeah. This guy must be, you know, fruity or whatever. And so I stepped out. I says, well, you can admire it all you want. I says, that's not a problem. Just let you know, this is my wife's truck and not mine. This <laughs> is the color she wanted. Yeah. I, just I think thought it was neat. I just saw a pink and purple car in, in uh, uh, Valparaiso. Some kids, they had the engine like that. And I'm like, whose engine is that? And the, and, and the guy says, I built it like that because that's <clears throat> the factory colors or something. I said, are you kidding? Like on a Honda or something. Yeah. And he goes, no, I'm really serious. He said, no, I did compliment it with the other colors. And I'm like, I can tell you a really funny story about that. And, and they laughed when I told them that story. And... Uh, it was just, it was too cute. When I saw that, I was cracking up. I was thinking of, of, of Kathy's car. Too cute. But, uh. But I did. I went over there. I had that 350, and I had it mocked together. You know, it wasn't, the bottom end was done. Yeah. <coughs> so I didn't have to worry about that, but I put the pan up on there. The you know, the stuff onto it. And I says, okay. So I could paint it. And it would you know, look correct like it was painted from the factory that way. I said, okay, what colors do you want on this? I usually, Chevrolet's, I didn't ask. It's Chevrolet, it's Molly Orange and Black. Period. Right. But she said, she told me, she says,